Now let's talk about calcium carbonate crystal form. Aragonite and calcite and waterite are three different forms of carbonate calcium crystal structure. But calcite and aragonite are the most common biological form. Aragonite and calcite precipitation and dissolution in seawater can be explained by this chemical reaction. The solubility of aragonite is 1.5 times more than calcite at 25 centigrade. Aragonite convert to calcite at 318 until 470 centigrade. Calcite is clear, colorless crystal and thermodynamically more stable than aragonite at higher temperature and pressure. But both of them have very similar crystal structure. Depending on the concentration of magnesium ion in the solution, the regulation of aragonite and calcite polymorphism is formed. Low magnesium to calcium ratio is favored to the calcite precipitation and high ratio of magnesium to calcium ratio lead to aragonite precipitation. During time when magnesium to calcium ratio decreases less than 2, carbonate structures created as a calcite form and more than this, we've had carbonate structure as an aragonite form. Here I have a one interesting question, of course I will answer it also. Magnesium to calcium ratio in our ocean is now 5.2 and we told that for providing calcite crystal structure we need low magnesium to calcium ratio. Then how the foraminifera and other calcareous animals make the calcite shell for themselves? The answer is they have two mechanisms for making calcite structure in their shell. Some of foraminifera, for example, actively remove magnesium from seawater before carbonate calcium precipitation in their shell. Some of them are able to precipitate calcite structure at high magnesium concentration also. However, we don't know this mechanism exactly. Now we want to talk about calcium carbonate saturation rate. Calcium carbonate saturation is a measure of the thermodynamic potential of seawater to form or dissolve of calcium carbonate. It is calculated by the flowing equilibrium. In the easy word, calcium carbonate saturation rate is a balance between calcium carbonate ions and calcium ions and carbonate ions separately. We can show the calcium carbonate saturation rate with omega. When omega is more than 1, there is a calcium carbonate super saturation state and calcium carbonate structure can be created, while at omega less than 1, calcium carbonate is dissolved. It means calcium carbonate starts to dissolve in the seawater. And when omega equal 1, there is equilibrium. It means there is no dissolve or precipitate. The aragonite saturation state of the tropical surface seawater has decreased from 4.5 in pre-industrial time in 1995 to almost 3.8 Nowadays, in this table, you can see the amount of CO2 and aragonite saturation state from last glacial time until next 85 years almost. As you can see, the changes are remarkable, and these changes in the aragonite saturation state range can reduce coral reef calcification in the future significantly. Alkalinity and pH in seawater adjust by marine carbonate accumulation. The main source of marine carbonate accumulation and production is provided by two important sources. 
continental shelf areas and pelagic deep sea sediments. Continental shelf area is include of reefs, carbonate platform, continental shelves, atolls, and pelagic deep sea sediment is including our river input, CO2 exchange with atmosphere, planktonic organism, benthic foraminifera, mollusca, and other benthic calcareous animals. About 80% of total carbonate on the Earth's surface is removed in order to participate in the calcium carbonate formation of marine sediment. In this table, you can see carbonate production and accumulation in the various environment. As you can see, deep sea is the main source of carbonate calcium accumulation. And after deep sea, the coral reef are the most important source of calcium carbonate. In order to understand the formation of calcite and aragonite, it is necessary to understand their crystal structure. In the calcite, the calcium ion are located in the alternative form with carbonate ions. I mean something like this. One calcium, one carbonate. One calcium, one carbonate. The basic structure you need in the all of carbonate calcium form is the carbonate group. Any carbonate is included of one carbon ion with three oxygen ions in the triangle form. The triangles are located in the vertical form on the C axis. In the calcite, the central calcium is surrounded by six oxygen. And in the aragonite, the central calcium site is surrounded by nine oxygen, nine float coordinated. The carbonate groups in the aragonite is formed in rhombohedral form that is located around of calcium ion. The aragonite has a denser structure in comparison with calcite. Coral calcification. Coral reefs are remarkable examples for understanding photosynthesis and calcification in marine benthic animals. Photosynthesis and calcification have a strong link with together. For example, it is already accepted that light enhances calcification. However, the relationship between photosynthesis and calcification has not been understood well. The presence of zooxanthella is necessary for reef establishment. Little et al. in 2004 found that the clade of zooxanthella is essential for the growth of juvenile coral colonies. They observed that the corals with clade C zooxanthella grow two or three times faster than those with clade D zooxanthella. Calcification is measurable in the coral. We have two types of calcification, net calcification and gross calcification. When coral, when coral start to calcify, always some amount of calcium carbonate dissolve in the seawater in order to adjustment of seawater pH. Coral calcification in this condition is called gross calcification. Net calcification equal gross calcification minus dissolution. To calculate net calcification, we can use the alkalinity anomaly technique with measuring total alkalinity dissolved inorganic carbon, calcium, ammonium, and phosphate before and after a special time of coral incubation, we can calculate net calcification. If you see the Smith and Kinsey 1978 method, he explained how we can measure calcification by the alkalinity anomaly technique. By this formula, we can calculate the gross calcification we need to know first dry weight. By this formula, we can calculate the gross calcification. Dry weight equal buoyant weight divided by 1 a minus D water divided by D skeleton. D water is the density of water 
in the different condition and it's related to the water temperature and salinity. The skeleton is the density of calcite is equal 2.71 gram per square centimeter. After understanding the dry weight, calcification rates is calculated as a change in the dry weight between two periods of measurement and normalized to the initial weight per month. But if we have low pH condition in our experiment, this formula showed to us the net calcification also.